The March digital SAT is fast approaching. I know you guys want to get 1600 on it. So let's talk about the best study routine for the digital March SAT that you guys can follow so you get the score you want. To jump me right into the video, let's talk about the first tip. Now the first tip is something that a lot of students ignore and that is to buy yourself a TI-84 calculator, all right? I don't want you guys to use the calculators that your parents use or the calculators that, you know, are like then from the 1990s or 2000s. I want you guys to use a nice brand new graphing calculator TI-84, and if you're thinking, man, is it even worth the investment for just one exam? You guys will probably use calculator for college, um, your AP Calc exam, your BC Calc exam, your whatever exam that has math in it. You're gonna need this calculator for probably the rest of your life. If you're a business major, CS major, it doesn't matter. So I am sure that you guys will soon start to realize that a TI-84 is probably one of the best academic investments you can have. And on the digital SAT, you guys have access to a calculator at all times on the SAT math portion. So why not have the best version of a calculator you possibly can have? Right? And personally, I've always used a TI-84. Um, I found it to be the easiest calculator to use, super fast, super efficient, and it makes solving problems much faster that actually do require a calculator, and which the ones that mental math can solve. But I also want you guys to not only buy a TI-84, but be sure to learn how to use it effectively. You have to know how to clear your calculator, right? Second plus seven, one, two. You have to know how to put an equation to y1 and y2, how to find the solution, how to find the min and the max of a range. These are all very strict that you need to know when using a TI-84 calculator if you really want to get the most out of it. And learning how to use a calculator effectively, again, like I said, will set you up for your other math classes you will take in the future, whether it be in college, um, in your high school career, or wherever. Oh, what just happened? Well, I have an amazing opportunity for you guys. And for that, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Careerist. You see, I'm a computer science major at the University of Maryland, and my friends and I are all applying for computer science jobs. If you haven't heard about the tech layoffs that are going on, it's getting pretty hard. Uh, even though I have a computer science internship at Capital One, and I have had a mentor, and I've spent so many years coding, the fact that I'm having difficulty means that for a lot of people, they're gonna be experiencing difficulty too. So that's where Careers is here to help you. You see, Careers has boot camps that address these specific problems for you know computer science and developing your computer science skills, and they hook you up with a simulated internship experience before you land your first job. So when you're applying in this super competitive environment right now, you already have you know that that one-on-one -on -one mentorship, that internship experience, those necessary skills that will help you land a career in tech. Thanks to Careers, you can enter tech in a couple of months without having a hardcore tech background. And and students that have used careers already have been getting salaries of $75,000 plus a year. So if you need an extra boost in starting your career, definitely check out careers and get 10% off using the link in the description below. Now, let's get into the video. Now the second tip is to practice your SAT math, tricks, patterns, and strategies every other day. So not every day, but every other day. Now, the calculator is you know always available for you, right? But you're gonna realize that as you do these SAT math digital problems, you're not gonna really need a calculator for most of them. In fact, I would say 90% of the problems, you do not need a calculator for. And now I know on the standard SAT, this is also the case where I would always say, most of the SAT calculator section problems you can do without a calculator. The same thing applies for the digital SAT. You do not need a calculator for the majority of these problems. In fact, if you are using calculator for a lot of the problems, then it's actually a trap and you're probably not solving the problems the fastest way possible. Now, if you do not know you know, the best SAT math tricks, patterns, and strategies for the digital SAT. And be sure to check out my SAT math course, the link in the description below, where I teach you everything within six hours so you have absolutely no excuse to learn everything in one day. Watch the course multiple times for better practice. Now my third tip, and this kind of coincides with my previous tip, right? If you're practicing SAT math every other day, then the other day, yet you have to be practicing SAT reading, right? You wanna practice your SAT reading tips, strategies, and patterns every other day. And personally, I would say use the Khan Academy for SAT practices for reading because the practices, yeah, they don't really teach you the strategies for you know, SAT reading, but they give you a lot of examples that you can use, a lot of writing examples. By constantly doing these problems over and over again, you might start seeing like, you know, some strategies, some patterns, some tips that Khan Academy might not explicitly say. Now, for those of you who are wondering, I do not have an SAT reading course available right now, but it will be available soon, I think February 15th or 16th, so if you wanna pre-order it, Check the link in the description below as well. Now, our fourth tip is to approach the digital SAT just like you would approach the normal SAT when practicing and also on the actual exam, right? The digital SAT, the real difference of it when it comes to the standard SAT is that it's just digital, right? You're doing it on a computer and like the sections are a little different, right? For example, you have a calculator for the entire math section versus just one part of it. But overall, like the concepts, the tricks, the, the patterns, they're all the same. 
The problem difficulties are all the same. The, 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 the patterns are all the same. Everything is literally the same. It's just the format of the exam that has changed. And I know it's tripping a lot of students up. Some students are thinking, oh my God, it's gonna be much harder now or much easier. Again, guys, it's literally the same. So same content, just different format. My next tip is to practice on a computer. Now, this might be like, well, there's not much difference between, you know, pen, pencil, paper, whatever, and a computer, but you actually, actually realize there is. In fact, a lot of students, when I first say, you know, use Khan Academy to take your practice exams, they kind of shy away from it because it feels weird. I know personally, when I was first started using Khan Academy for SAT problems, it felt really weird, like not seeing the problems on paper in front of me, being able to write, you know, over the problems and you like underline the problem or part of it. But on the digital SAT, you know, you can't do that. It's all digital, so you can't really start underlining things the way you want to with your pencil, right? You have to use scratch paper and you have to do your work on scratch paper, but you don't really have like the problem as like the base canvas. And that actually gets a lot of students tripped up and it becomes sometimes like a obstacle for a lot of students and you don't want to be that student where, you know, just because SAT is now digital, you're starting your struggle, where otherwise when it was on paper, you were doing well. You don't want the format change to start affecting your results. And the best way to counter that is to use Khan Academy again and do all the online problems on it. Get used to doing things more mentally, not using your, your pen and pencil or not using your paper. Uh, take practice tests on Khan Academy. I know some students like to print out the practice exam again because they have like the base problem as a canvas, but on digital SAT, that's no longer an option. So what you wanna do is to just use the practice test that Khan Academy offers and take them, right? Take them digitally. I'm sure College Board has some practice problems as well. Take them digitally. Do you really want to minimize the amount of like SAT papers you're printing because that format change could trip you up and you don't want to be that person you know, that gets tripped up. And my last tip is to use digital SAT practice exams. Now you guys might be like, well, what about the previous practice exam? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the ones that College Board has administered, the ones that have been released from like previous dates. Those are all still valid because like I said, the digital SAT and normal SAT are pretty much the same, it's just a format change, right? So you can use those, those non-digital SAT practice exams to study for the digital SAT. But in the same time, you also want to, you know, see the most correlative exam possible. And the only way to do that is by taking the digital SAT practice exam because that's exactly what you're about to face. Yes, the old ones are pretty much the same, uh, but you know, again, format differences, but when you have the digital versions available that have the exact same format, exact same problems, why not use that, right? And the best of both worlds is to just use both, right? Take as many practice exams as possible, take the digital ones, take the non-digital ones. You just wanna spam practice exams because by doing this and studying math and reading every other day, you're gonna start perfecting your craft and start learning things at a much higher rate. And the best part about taking practice exams is you can monitor your progress because you're never gonna know how good you are doing or if you're actually improving on the digital SAT if you're not seeing results, right? If you're seeing that you're starting to go down every other practice exam or like you're going up sometimes, down sometimes, you're staying stagnant, your study routine isn't optimized. You need to change things up a bit, maybe dedicate more time to math, dedicate more time to reading, uh, dedicate more time watching the course, it's gonna come out on the 15th. You gotta you know, start practicing more because that's the only way you really can start improving your score and you wanna practice right. And that's why this whole purpose of this video is to create the best study routine possible. So hopefully you guys were able to optimize your study routine using some of these tips and let me know which tip was your favorite so that way I can tell everyone in the comments to go follow that tip. So thank y'all for watching, peace.